Chapter 13 Tax and Accounting Issues This chapter identifies and explains terminology involved with taxes and accounting. In other words, if you understand the terminology, you'll understand the chapter. This is a very short chapter. This chapter will cover ways that even small companies can save money. Transfer pricing is pricing used on international invoices between two related parties. An example is a subsidiary. A subsidiary then is a um, your company, a part of your company is in that country. You'll list the same price as you would sell it to a non-related party. So as it comes from the United States building to the building that you have in the other country, you sell it to yourself at the same price in US dollars. So this is used so that you can stay within the US dollar without converting and it's really quite helpful. You are not allowed to list low prices to avoid taxes basically. Duty drawback. It's really a pretty interesting thing. Um, duty drawback means that you can recover duty tax that you paid in that country. Now we're going to go into it in a little more depth, but I wanted you first of all to see that when you get the duty back, customs will keep 1% handling fee. And you have three to five years to file for the refund. It's depending on the country. So it's somewhere between three and five years. We're going to take a look at bonded warehouses and free trade zones. The use of free trade zones are designed to eliminate import duties. All right, You want to try to eliminate them when, when at all possible. This means that goods are in the country, but Customs has not yet cleared them. So they consider them under their control and not available for local consumption. As long as it hasn't cleared Customs, it eliminates the need for paying duty and you would not have to pay uh, worry about duty drawback so let me go into this a little bit more right this point right here is important if assembly to a product happens for testing uh, this is really helpful with the free trade zone so basically sometimes you'll bring a product you'll ship it across the border uh, to another country and then you'll have to test it and so if, if something happens that things don't work, you're, you can send it back to the United States without paying the, um, without paying the duty. Another thing is you might uh, ship it unassembled because it's more practical to do that. The shipment's easier and you assemble it there. So you ship it, then you assemble it, and as soon as you um, send it out, so then that's when you bring it through customs. So it's weird. Sometimes the um, the amount of money that you owe for duty would be more unassembled than it would assembled, for example, and so you can avoid some duty. All right, so that's basically how that works. Now, the bonded warehouse is somewhat the same. It offers the same benefits, but the only activity allowed is the storing of that inventory. So let's say you have exported products and only part of the shipment has been sold. So the part that has been sold would be subject to import taxes. So those import duties are paid and it goes to the people sold. But the other ones are pending. They haven't been sold yet. So you don't pay any duty on that. You just store it in this bonded warehouse until it is sold. So that if it's not sold, you've never had to pay the duty. In other words, they're on hold because they don't have a destination yet. You want to avoid paying taxes when you're going to have to ask for that duty drawback. All right, now probably is a good time to talk about duty drawback. So when you pay duty, you have a certain amount of time to try to get some of that duty back for one reason or another. And so in the same scenario, if you paid all of the duty, but you only shipped part of that, um, actually imported part of that and shipped the rest back, you would want some of your duty back. And that's what that means, duty drawback. Because of the bonded warehouse or the free trade zone, that allows it so that you only have to pay duty on the part that's actually 
officially exported. And so you don't have to worry about trying to get money back. I hope that helps. Now, VAT, value added tax. This is like a national sales tax, and the U.S. doesn't have this. But many, many countries do. So even when you are, um, you are traveling and you have things in your suitcase, you know, they're going to want to know how much, um, how much money have you paid in, in, uh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me rephrase that. When you have things in your, in your, um, that you have paid for, if you keep those receipts, you could have many times get some of your national sales tax back as you are leaving to go back to the United States. Um, this is applied directly to products at point of entry when goods are cleared through customs and it applies to all products like sales tax. Duties are different from that. Duties are only applied to imports to discourage foreign produced products. So if the duty is low, they're not discouraging it. If the duty is 100%, that country is uh, basically saying they are not wanting you to um, import your things into their country. If you ever go to Brazil, that's a really good example. Um, you don't want to buy electronics there because it is terribly, terribly expensive. Um, the amount of tax that is paid for us to in the United States to ship um, Apple products or whatever over there is extreme. And so a lot of times uh, when students come over to study at Kirkwood, they will buy all their electronics here. They'll take the tags and boxes and they'll leave them all in the United States and just kind of bring the things back with them. U.S. tax incentives for exporters. Here is a, a list of two. The first is the Foreign Sales Corporation, FSC. And this was ruled illegal by the World Trade Organization, but there are some great areas that can be an exception. And so with both of these, you would need, as your company, to use a attorney to figure out whether you could uh, use these tax incentives. The ICDISC um, interest charge, this is not DISC, that represents something else in international trade. It's used by small exporters to defer tax savings. And so again, this is something that um, I've outlined here, but in general, you would use your attorney in this uh, situation to make sure that you're doing it correctly. All right, so that's the end of the chapter 13 video lecture.